Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to State of Decay 2 with Scout. So if you're wondering why there haven't been very many, many videos on the channel, if I can speak, it's because of this game right here. I love the zombie apocalypse, I love The Walking Dead, I love all that stuff. And uh, I've been wanting to do a playthrough type video for you guys for a long time. And so I've decided that I'm going to do a playthrough for you guys of State of Decay 2, which is one of my favorite games right now. I've been through it 12 times at least. And uh, so my intent is to show you guys everything that I know about this game and uh, just show it off to you guys and hopefully get you guys interested in the game as well. So starting off, um, again, trying to teach you guys about the game. You won't have continue game up here, obviously. You'll have start a new game. There's two ways to play State of Decay 2. You can either uh, do the tutorial or you can make a community from scratch with random survivors. So just to give you an idea of what that's like, if you go to manage, uh, here we'll go over here to an empty and you'll get this. You can either play the tutorial or skip it. Uh, I'm going to choose replay tutorial here just to show you guys what this is all about. This would be like if you were starting the game from scratch, what it would look like. And we'll give it a minute to load here. Now legacies are something I'll get into. You guys won't have this starting the game from scratch, but uh, this depends on your previous playthroughs. I'm not going to pick any and I'm not going to pick any boons for the playthrough that I'm doing for you guys. I'm going to, again, just like you guys would, start from scratch. But this is what you'll see. These are the two survivors that you'll start with, right? You have the surly siblings that you can choose from, the old buddies, uh, the perpetual breakup couple, and the odd couple that met after uh, the zombie apocalypse. And what you can do is you can read their traits right here their skills everybody's got cardio wits fighting and shooting until they specialize them and then you can pick up a fifth skill and you can look through here and kind of determine what it is that you might kind of want in your survivors or what it is you don't want now don't feel wedded to these traits here right you may get some bad ones traumatic flashbacks is not particularly good no belief in destiny and tells bad jokes you know these things aren't great if you don't like what you see you can always exit the game and then come back and start again and you'll have these same models these are never going to change these groups of two but the traits that they have will change so you can keep going through them until you get some traits that you do like and then the advantage to playing through the tutorial not only is it going to teach you how to play but in addition to these two survivors in the background that you get for them you'll get a doctor and you'll get a soldier you'll also start the game with a ppk with one magazine uh, a little 22 caliber pistol and the soldier will come with an arctic warrior think uh 762 caliber magazine fed bolt action sniper rifle it's actually a really good rifle so yeah sitting, playing through the tutorial especially if you haven't done this before really does kind of set you up now the other way you can do this is you can make your community entirely from scratch which is what i'm going to do for this playthrough so if we go back exit game right and you choose skip tutorial which is something you can do it's gonna take you to again we're going to play without any legacies for now this screen right here now if you have pre previous playthroughs if your survivors have made it through alive they'll be right here you can click this box and your previous playthrough survivors will be right there along with all the equipment that you gave them so you can get a huge head start on your next playthrough if you uh, go into your stash identify the survivors that you want to take into the next playthrough go into the stash with them load them up with stuff and then when you start your next community they'll be right here with everything not only everything they are equipped with but everything in their backpack so that's how you can get a huge head start uh, or since you won't have any on your first playthrough you'll fill out with random survivors and you get this screen and here you can see just randomly generated survivors and you just keep click 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 clicking until you get survivors that you want now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do a playthrough um, with some survivors that are loosely based and some old friend of mine from back in the day, they wanted to see this game as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and randomly generate survivors until I get some that are pretty close to me and my two buddies. I'm going to save you guys the pain of watching that. And uh, we're going to jump into my community, which I am going to make with random survivors. Now, the downside to doing it this way is you won't get that soldier you won't get that doctor and you'll only start with three survivors instead of four but it's not all that bad so i uh, wish me luck guys and i'll see you in a few minutes once i've got my randomly generated survivors
All right, guys, hopefully you can hear me now. And uh, here we are on the map with our new survivors. Um, let's see. We can press select, open up the map. Now, you see it starts you out. You run out of gas here uh, along the road. You should have a car somewhere if I can find it. Uh, there's my car way down there. And uh, I had to restart it once to get the sound recorder. My mic's being really funny. I did adjust the audio settings, so hopefully that's better for you guys. And step number one is to lead your community to your new home. Now, you'll have a kind of a stash in the middle of nowhere, and then the game will ask you to make it over to what's going to be your starter base for your community. Uh, another thing I didn't cover initially, one of the kind of the only really harsh significant downsides to making a community from scratch like this is you don't start out with any guns now if you buy the ultimate edition of the game or if you have some pre-order DLC or something like that it's not so bad because you can anyone out there wants to swap so we got somebody that wants to trade um, it's not so bad because you can use your radio to call in supply drops and that will get you some really good guns and melee weapons now I do have those but I'm going to lay off of using them for just a little bit because I kind of want you guys to see what this is like if you just, you know, pay the, uh, I think it's the 25 bucks for just kind of the base version of the game. I want you guys to have that experience. And in a way, it's a, it's a lot more exciting to play that way because every bullet counts and every weapon counts. And it's just, uh, it's really interesting. Um, yeah, I'm sure you smell some fat loot in there. That's a house, man. There's not going to be any loot in there at all. So we're playing with Colin the Farmer right now. We're going to go up here and baseball back this zombie. So when you find a base, like you can see this house up here that we're heading towards, uh, one of the first things you're going to have to do in order to establish a base in an empty building is clear it. You can't just uh, run in and automatically settle you gotta to clear all done. the zombies out which is what a uh, farmer there is talking about so we're gonna open this door here and if you look down in the bottom left on the mini map you can see kind of the map of the ah get off me of the building that you're in and the places that you have not been that you need to clear are annotated with the little black boxes and you can see them moving away as I move through here so, hey, what's that? Oh, Plague Zombie, we've killed one already. We just picked up a piece of that. Clear this down here. Uh, turn on the flashlight so we can see in here a little better. There's going to be a zombie outside. Yep, you see, he can still smell him, so he's not going to let me... Whoa! That was a little awkward. Not going to let me uh, establish my base in there just yet. There we go. And now we can claim this place. So we're going to go back upstairs. And here's what you're trying to find. This little interaction point. There'll be one in almost every building. In this case, it's a home site. And that allows you to claim the home site. has to be gathering materials we'll need them to improve this place that's right we... yeah so now you've got your base right and what you need to do is go in here and take a look at it so you, your bases are made of slots small slots and large slots so this doesn't have any large slots just smalls and we got uh, up on the second floor the kitchen and the storage on the first floor we got a double bunk our command center our master bedroom which is wrecked we got an empty slot in the backyard and front yard and we got some trash that we can clear out so first thing we're gonna do is clear out this trash now over here you'll notice we got a community of three and then to the right it's telling you how many you have available to do labor in this case only one because it takes two people to clear out that trash but it's only gonna take them 40 seconds to do it so we're gonna open this up this is our stash this is where everything is kept uh, melee weapon your close combat weapon slash last resort weapon which fortunately doesn't wear gun goes here and then uh, you can carry a rucksack of supplies in addition to your backpack and whatever's in it so we're going to drop off the plague samples and you know what we're going to consolidate because i like to take one survivor out at a time so we're going to leave him here with nothing and there's colin you can see An old farmer he is a farmer uh, tabletop gamer and he loves the outdoors cardio with shooting funny and guardian from his farmer our gardening from his farmer background here we have John Wright um, nicknamed Fred 
Oil and tire tech, cat lover, and he's sarcastic, which you see gives us plus 10% standing rewards, but it also uh, makes him easily frustrated and irritable towards other people. And he is a driving specialist. You can see down here uh, that gives us 100% bonus fuel efficiency and 50% reduction to vehicle impact when we hit stuff and 50% reduction to the noise the vehicle makes. So that's pretty handy. And then here we have Jeremy McLeod who is a comic collector, he went to ROTC, which affects his skills, probably his shooting, maybe fighting, it's difficult to say, it doesn't say, and he's brave, whatever that does, so that's awesome. And, ow, what the hell, how did the zombie get in my house? Alright, so I'm, like, finish him off. That won't work. Uh, yeah. Wow, what an obnoxious zombie. So I'm going to take over Mac. Uh, does he have anything? No. Uh, we're going to take three is the max stack we can take for now. And what we are going to do is climb to the top of a nearby cell tower to survey the local area. There's one right there out the back door. Uh, I thought there was a door here. Let's go up See here. You losers later. Now, again, I told you guys I had to restart this because my audio wasn't actually picking up my mic and it moved me way up here. When you start, you'll start down here next to your vehicle. Um, never forget to look in the trunk of your vehicle. Your vehicle will have some supplies in it that you can use. Uh, in this case, I'm going to have to pick it off, go back and get them. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this game down at the bottom left, you'll see your mini map. Uh, you'll see what you're carrying in your backpack that is usable, and you'll see two bars. The right is your health in red, the left is your stamina in blue, which decreases as you fight, as you run, as you do no different things. Right um, how the hell? I guess I missed the door over there. Now, lootable containers are highlighted. As you see this little box flashing right here, you come over here and search it. If you hold the button down, it'll search it slowly, as I'm doing now. If you press the left bumper, if you have a control map, I'll search it quickly, but you can useful. screw that up and make a bunch of noise, which will attract zombies. I don't want to clean this up, so I thought I could search that. Oh, you can see in the top left, there are no more searchable containers here. So we are going to climb to the top of this shindig right here and have a look around. And this is really important activity. It's very small. Uh, it's not obvious. But it's a lot like Assassin's Creed or many of the other games that you've played in the past. You get up to a high point, you look around, and it can kind of inform where you need to go next. Um, you can get on top of these cell towers like I am now. They offer you the best visibility. You can also get up on top of uh, billboards and things like that. And then, like it's saying right here, you can survey around and get an idea of what's around you. And the way you survey is you just aim. Whoosh, and it shows you all the things you can see. We could build an awesome outpost at that place. And you just look around like we're doing here. And um, now the loot generation in this game follows kind of a logic pattern. For example, if you're looking for guns we can get and ammo, to go to a gun store. If you're looking for, say, gas for your car, go to a gas station. If you're looking for auto parts, oh, go to uh, an auto parts store and so We're on some good and so forth. So that is why it's important to look around because every minute counts. Your survivors are hungry, you know, your resources are dwindling down, you need to make the most of your time. And that's why surveying is important because you can determine exactly what it is you need and then where you need to go to get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue surveying even though we've fulfilled the mission requirements. Yeah, that'd be oh, And there is a play card. So on every map, there are three different maps in the game. Uh, that you can spawn in on. On every map there will be 10 play cards and your initial goal in the game is to take out the play cards. The play cards are apparently responsible for creating the plague zombies and there are several different ways to do that. Oh, which brings to mind another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, another bonus of the tutorial is you can pick which map you go to whereas if you just randomly generate survivors like I did you get whatever map it picks for you. So that's another benefit of surveying is you can find the play cards. Some people initially were under the impression that you had to use the radio to do that. That is not the case. All you need to do is look around and you will find them. And your character's wits uh, will also determine how close you need to be something before it is marked on your map. Once it's marked on your map, it will always be there. Uh, so speaking of skills, yeah, you got four basic skills. Like I talked to you guys about uh, cardio. 
fighting, shooting, and wits. I uh, thought a zombie was coming up on me. And um, those are measured in stars, as you guys saw. And basically, it gets better as you do stuff. You want to improve your cardio, run. You want to improve your fighting, fight with a melee weapon. You want to improve your shooting, shoot things, etc. Now, once it's maxed out, you'll get an opportunity. There you go. You see my cardio just went up. Now, once it's maxed out, you'll get the opportunity to specialize it. And the specializations that are available to you will depend uh, on your character's background and so on and so forth. There's traits and uh, so on. Now, there are a total of four specializations for each of the four skills. Um, is there a best one? I don't really think so. I think all the specializations are pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to go into all of them in any great detail because that would be a bunch of boring sitting here looking at menus and stuff. But I will tell you, uh, for example, uh, the cardio specializations are backpacking, marathon, uh, let's see, powerhouse and acrobatics. Um, the fighting specializations are swordplay, striking, endurance, and close combat. Uh, the shooting specializations are sharpshooting, gunslinger, let's see, uh, weapon handling, and there's one more that escapes me right now. Discipline, I believe, is what it is. And, no, nope, discipline is... Finally, finished. Oh, assault. Assault is the last of the shooting ones. And then uh, your wits specializations are discipline, uh, resourcefulness, uh, scouting, and stealth. Now, is there a best one? Uh, they're all useful, you know? I, I don't mind having any of them. But I will say... The one exception to that is shooting. Uh, I think bar none, gunslinging is the best shooting skill. What that allows you to do is press and hold the A button, it'll lock on to uh, a target's head. And we've just about completed this mission here. You can see the mission requirements in the top right. And uh, as long as you hold the A button, you're locked on to his head, to and you shoot him in the head, Either and he's dead. An and it also increases your... Um, Reload speed by like 200% or something ridiculous. So yeah, gunslinging is pretty strong. And also I prefer sword play. Oh but no really way. they're all good. And we'll get to that as we play through the game. Um, if we check out our base here. Yep, they've cleared that out. So we are going to clear out the master bedroom. And do we have enough labor left over? We do to start a workshop. Actually, you know what? I don't want the workshop there. I want the workshop on... Well, it gives me the XP. Fine. We'll put the workshop there. And now somebody needs some assistance. Now I'm kind of concerned about how much, where, who needs assistance? Oh, they want plague here and there's a wandering trader up there. Um, no, we can do that because we kind of need to go Good back to towards our car anyway. Uh, we need fuel though. Our vehicle is out of fuel. It's operational, it just needs fuel. So I tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way south towards this group and along the way I'm going to check these garages. Remember I told you loot is procedurally generated so if you're looking for fuel, look in garages. You can also look on porches for gas cans like for mall mowers and stuff. You'll frequently find gas cans sitting out there like that one right there. Oh, we just finished uh, building a workshop. That's outstanding. And parts shit. Uh, you can also look in the trunks of cars. Sometimes people carry spare gas cans in their car. If we can kill this zombie. Um, aha! Right here, that is a rare weapons case. You will find rare weapons in there. Unfortunately, that one spawned open. Uh, oops, and that's what happens when you try to rust the search and you make a bunch of noise. You can see the little circles, pulsing circles on the mini map in the bottom left. That's noise. It shows you how far the noise goes, so you give an idea. Ah, no! 
of how much noise you are making. Um, what else can I tell you guys about survivors that you need to know? Oh, um, leaders, right? Uh, your survivors have reputation within their community or influence, if you will, right? Uh, based on what they've done, everything from whacking zombies to, you know, not killing yourself. Everything you do generates uh, influence and reputation. Uh, you start off as a recruit, you then become a citizen, and eventually you can become a hero. Once you unlock uh, the hero level within your community, you'll get... Uh, <coughs> excuse me, you'll get another bonus. Uh, they'll provide something else for the community. Which, as soon as I'm done searching here, I'll try to show you guys. Still looking for a box of rubber bands, we'll trade that. Um, so if we look at Mac here, for example, here, Citizen, the hero bonus is hard choices. People are happy when someone else is willing. You get that bonus. Now, you see down at the bottom, Leadership Warlord. What that's talking about is every community eventually needs a leader. You can see the spot for it right here. Once you become a hero, you can be made the leader of the community. Now, there are four different types of leaders based on the four archetypes for survivors. Warlord, Sheriff, Builder, and Trader. I don't want to pick up that Molotov because then I'll be out. I won't have enough space to hold a gas can if I find one. And what that does is once you kill the last Plague Heart, uh, the game's not over. There's still a little bit more to do. And what there is to do depends on the archetype of your leader. And when you beat the game, that's where you come into the boons. If you remember at the very beginning of the video, you saw the bit about uh, boons in previous communities. Each type of leader gives you a different boon that you can carry forward into your next playthrough. Uh, warlords give you a stack of guns and ammunition. Uh, Sheriff gives you a delivery of supplies and I, I want this but I don't want to carry it right now. Uh, Sheriff gives you a delivery of supplies about every in-game day. Trader gives you a whole bunch of influence and a uh, boon trader will come to your base once you establish it, your first base, and stay for a short time. And the builder legacy gives you power and water throughout your entire base at every base that you occupy for free no cost so yeah all of those moons pretty flipping nice um honestly though i know a lot of people like warlord because they want the grenades and the guns and that's all well and good and i can't blame them but honestly i think oh there we go our queen size bed master bedroom is cleaned up and repaired i think uh, people just vastly underestimate how useful it is to have water and power for free. That is by far my favorite boon. And uh, it's kind of neat because each, uh, each ending is also different, obviously. And maybe there'll be a gas can out here? No. Dented can of beer again. Something else we can trade if they'll trade with us. Um, hello? It's very dark in this game. We need to talk to Shavella. What do you want? Play samples. Yeah, sure, we can do that. I know how to collect samples. Hey, will you trade with me? Yes. Um, they don't... Hey, come back. Blah, blah. Yes, destroy the play card. We know how to get that. We'll go to that. What I want to do is trade and this high value, high trade value stuff. Give it to them, which frees up my inventory, off. and I was out here. hoping that they would have a Those gas can. Now, but there will be. Oops. And nothing. Fantastic. Oh, more 762. That's nice. And another soda can bomb. I can carry that too. Um, fuel though. We desperately need fuel, and now you can see, if you look on the minimap, that's now blacked out because we've taken everything out of it, which is very nice. You can tell what you've looted, where you've been, uh, where you've taken everything, so it prevents you from having to uh, accidentally backtrack. Um, I desperately want a can of fuel because we're going to need a car. 
Building supplies are great. We'll take those, but fuel. Uh, here's an actual in-game car right here. Now that's for what I mean by that in-game car. Like this is just junk. It's decoration. This is an actual car that you can get in and drive if it has fuel. And if, damn it. Okay, well that's that. Ah, look at that. That worked out well. Now, every car is a little bit different. Uh, they have different amounts of space. Uh, this car, for example, will only hold four things in the trunk, as opposed to my truck here. This is the truck that we abandoned because it ran out of fuel, which has a storage capacity of six. I can get these zombies off me. And, oh my goodness, more zombies. As I was telling you guys earlier, if these guys will get off me, if you check the back of the trunk, you can see we have significant supplies in here. And why is there a gas can in the back of the truck? Oh, good lord. So much for common sense. Take these zombies out. Oh, now my pipe is about to break. Um, let's see. So yeah, this, you see we got some supplies here. So what we're going to do, the truck's in pretty rough shape. We're going to drop the building supplies in the back of the truck. Take the gas can. No, nope, don't ride. We are going to take the gas can, fill up the truck. And then we're going to drive it back, and uh, hopefully we will come across a um, repair kit soon so we can repair this thing. But the reason we want to take the truck, even though it's banged up, is because it's got our supplies in it. So we'll shoot this thing up to base, and it is starting to get very dark. Plus we need to go back uh, and do something about our melee weapon because we don't have a gun right now. Uh, so when you get to your base, look around for things that look like blatant parking spots, like this. Because if you park your vehicle there, then you can transfer whatever is in the back directly to your base without having to physically shuttle it back and forth, like that. Um, what do we need? Uh, meds and ammo. So we can drop off ammo and meds, just like that. And you can see up in the top left, it dropped it all up for us. Now all we're missing is fuel, and that does wonders for the morale of our community to not out there, okay? be worried about supply so much. We can drop all this off and go to melee weapons, put that in there, and now we can repair our pipe, which I'm kind of loath to do, but, you know, until I find something better... And do I really want to use the truck all that much? Not really. There's a um, there's an ambulance. We're going to go grab that ambulance. Why are we going to grab the ambulance? Because vans, even though they are horribly slow and they suck, they have a storage capacity of eight, which means you can put a lot of stuff in them. Now you can see that I just maxed out my fighting. So what you do? is you go down here, fighting, as you can see, plus 28 max health, improves your skill with hand-to-hand, -hand, and now we can specialize it. You get endurance, which is increased health, and trauma accrued more slowly, so if you fall, you're less likely to hurt yourself, etc., etc. It gives you a slam. Or swordplay, which makes you very much more lethal with bladed weapons and unlocks a leg sweep. As I told you guys, swordplay is my favorite, so I am definitely taking swordplay. We just gotta find a sword or a bladed weapon of any kind. Um, there are axes in the game as well, swordplay will work with them. And uh, what we're going to do is find one, and we can start showing you guys swordplay. So why do I like... I'll get off. I'm trying to dodge, but you can dodge in time. So why do I like swordplay better? Because you'll notice blunt weapons will knock zombies down pretty handily, even when you're not very proficient with them like I am right now. But that's all it does. And when you're surrounded by zombies, that doesn't do you a great deal of good. 
what I would like to be able to do is maim them. And that's where bladed weapons come in. Uh, you can often, with a bladed weapon, even if you don't kill the zombie, take its arms off, etc., its legs, and that prevents it from grabbing you, which makes your life a lot easier. Which is why I just, I feel like swords are just better. Uh, so we are going to go in here and check this out. Again, what I want, what I'm looking for is a gun. Uh, and hopefully a better in the survivalist store melee weapon. Preferably even a bladed one. Before I go picking a fight with plague zombies, because I... Oh, come on. And that's one of the things I don't like about the game. I was trying to finish that zombie. It gives you that error message, and you're instantly going to get jumped on and bitten when that happens. So yeah, that's why I came here first rather than going over to deal with the plague zombies is I want a better weapon. Uh, preferably yeah, a gun. Be using this soon. 357 rounds, bag of ammo. That's that rucksack spot we were talking about. It's all rucksacks of supplies. Think of it as bulk supplies. Um, I haven't done a very good job of showing that to you guys, but you need food, medicine, building supplies, ammunition, and fuel. Those are the five categories of bulk supplies that your base runs off of. Um, they're used by various things and activities, and your survivors will, you know, do things like kick over your supplies and ruin them and break them. So they're always counting down, and this is how you get more. You go out, you explore, you scavenge, you find rucksacks of said supplies that you bring back to your base. And that's exactly what we wanted. A P22045 will work. We will take those 45 caliber ammunition rounds. Again, it's not the greatest, but like I told you guys, that's kind of the excitement to see here. of playing the game like this. Is even when you find just a little 45 pistol, you're like, hallelujah. Uh, whereas if you use all the supply drops and everything else, it just kind of takes something out of it because you don't ever really feel stressed. And this is now clear, so as you can see on the minimap, it goes black. It goes black, and that tells us we've gotten everything we need out of here. Uh, you also notice I'm carrying bandages, right, instead of those pills. Uh, like in a lot of games, pills will restore your health. Um, I prefer pills. Why do I prefer pills? Watch this. If I press that and I use my bandage, you see that? As long as that animation is going, you're recovering health. If the animation stops, however, i.e. you fall or get whacked by a zombie or something bad happens, you stop regaining health. How nice is this? This ambulance has got a lot of great supplies in it, and it's got gas, and it's in perfect condition. That is awesome. Um, so yeah, you, your bandage can be interrupted, and you won't get the benefit of it, and as you saw, you have to go through the entire animation in order to get the full benefit of the bandage. So to me, uh, painkillers, the pills, are far, far better. And, uh, bandages but for right now while I'm saving up trying to get painkillers I will make do with the bandages and what I'm trying to do I remember we saw a uh, plague heart down this way so as long as I got a fresh tank of gas for free and the ambulance I'm trying to creep down this way and find some plague zombies now you're probably saying, Scout, Scout, you're getting eaten up by zombies. How are you not turning into one? In this game, the bite of a zombie doesn't automatically make you a zombie. In fact, these regular zombies can do nothing except kill you. That's not going to turn you into a zombie. The bright red zombies, which are plague zombies, which you'll see here shortly if you haven't noticed them already, they actually carry uh, the blood plague, which is, you know, the, uh, the whole get turned into a zombie thing that we're all familiar with. So that mechanic is in here, but it's not every zombie that you have to worry about. It's just the plague zombies. And yes, if you get the blood plague and you do not cure it in time, yes, your survivor will turn into a zombie and you'll have to shoot them in the head. One, to get them to stop killing you, but two, to try and recover anything else that they had. So as long as we're here, we're going to make sure, yep, all sites surveyed so we haven't missed anything. Again, the cell tower will... Um, mean that a lot of the surveying from these shorter billboards will be redundant and already done. 
But uh, what I'd like to do is get up here and get these plague samples and kind of show you guys that and the completion of one quest before we call this a wrap. I'm trying to keep these episodes down to about 30 minutes each so that they're watchable and you don't feel like you're watching like a an hour long show. But the zombies are not going to cooperate and this is one of the things I don't like. Um, because of the way zombies spawn, um, obviously they're not populating the entire map with zombies, they're spawning them in as you move through the map so that you feel like there are always zombies around but they're not. But because of the way they spawn them in, it's kind of clunky and you end up kind of chain aggroing into zombies. Even though you're sticking to your melee weapon, you're trying to be quiet, etc, etc, you, you just kind of can't help it. And what's this? Uh, that's that wandering trader, which he's about to disappear in 20 seconds, and I think all he had was fireworks. Anyway, what am I talking about? Well, the Independence Day DLC, if you buy the um, Ultimate Edition of the game, added... Um, oh, there's people being seized by zombies, but I gotta measure the risk of... Do I really want to go over there and deal with that right now with only 145? And yeah, I'm probably not gonna help them. Must think they own this town. I'm surprised there are no plague zombies. There we go. Like, it's being really obnoxious with the spawn. Fantastic. And, uh, what was I talking about? I think I was talking about how, uh, zombies spawn into other zombies, and yeah, it can be really frustrating. Oh, and the uh, the day or I'm sorry, Independence Day DLC. So yeah, that is uh, downloadable content, and really it introduced some items into the game. There we go. And we should have one back at the base. Play example. Usually you only get one. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, and it's cool. I mean, it's got some neat trucks. Uh, vehicles. It features vehicles for the first time that can. Actually, you can defend them from zombies. If zombies jump on your vehicle, they'll eventually tear... Oh, shit. As you can see, my melee weapon just broke, and now I've got a problem. And there you go. There we go. Um, I didn't want to rush it, but I'm done now. They'll eventually tear your vehicle apart. One of the neat things about the Independence Day DLC was for the first time it featured vehicles that, hey, somebody thought... Let's do something about zombies ripping our doors apart. Other than that, though, eh, it's fireworks and fireworks launchers and crap like that. And yeah, it's funny and all that. Yeah, I already but, got all the crap I can carry. Eh, I kind of want those circuitry boards. We're going to have to come back to them. Uh, other than that, though, um, I was kind of let down by the Independence Day DLC. It's one of those things that's fun for a second, and then it's done. And also, uh, when the DLC came out, uh, it broke all the other traders. You used to get traders that rotated through every in-game day and had something different. So, almost every day there was somebody that you could trade with that had something new and different. Now, they're all Independence Day traders, which is frustrating. Finish this zombie. Alright, and then what we're going to do is jump into our van. Actually, let's uh, download the rucksack of ammunition here. I should have probably grabbed some fuel while I was here, too. Should we grab some fuel? Yeah, let's grab some fuel right quick. And then we'll wrap this quest up and wrap up the video. Oh, going to have to go around. I need to be careful though because I'm not a close combat specialist and all I have is my knife to defend myself. Unless I want to shoot my gun which is unsilenced and will attract every zombie for a thousand miles and I went the wrong way. Busy running my mouth not paying attention. So yeah, that's kind of a brief overview guys of uh, the survivors and everything about them and then your community and kind of the basics. I hope that that makes sense to you guys so that you can understand what I'm doing and kind of lay the groundwork for watching uh, the playthrough and understand what's going on. I just want to get uh, a little bit more to the right. Yep. Over here, grab a rucksack of fuel while we were out. 
and then get back in the base. Um, here, just so you guys can... There. But as you can see, you saw the sound echoing around. And... Yeah, I'm full, so I need to find the actual fuel rucksack here, which is probably not these little containers. Somehow I got away with firing that 145 round and didn't summon 6,000 zombies. Perfect. And I can come back here now and pick up those fuel jerry cans, which I will. Um, you can see we're starting to get a lot of quests. Uh, the problem is I don't really feel comfortable going out and doing them. Uh, there's a freaking out way over there. Like, I'm sorry, but that thing's going to eat you guys. And... The thing is, if the quests are on timers, and it's really kind of frustrating. Uh, if you don't do the quest in time, it'll disappear. And if you don't finish it in time, it'll often disappear, which is very frustrating. So that's why I, I typically try to do one thing at a time, or if I'm going to do multiple things, I try to do it in a circuit, you know what I mean? Where as I move to get one thing for quest one, I'm also moving closer to quest two. That way it's all kind of working out. And if it, if the quest can't be done that way, if it pulls me far away, like that quest to go help those people with the zombie in the house, I'm not going to go do it. Because all it's going to do is take me way out there, burn up what little bit of fuel I have, and when I get there, I'm not entirely confident I'm going to be able to deal with that situation with just a 45, and certainly not with a broken lead pipe as my only melee weapon, so that's kind of the logic I use in doing quests. So we are going to go back and um, woo, give these people the plague samples that they asked for, and then we will be friendly with this community. And the more communities we can build friendships and relationships with, the more benefits we will get. It's actually really beneficial to help out other communities, unless you have a real reason not to. Uh, and in fact, as long as I'm here, I'm going to ditch some of this stuff. Ah! That's a plague zombie. And as you can see, I now have a little thermometer above my health gauge which reflects the level golly, of infection that this character has. And you can get rid of infection, but you need the appropriate tools. Uh, an infirmary with the proper equipment. You gonna pick that up? An infirmary with the proper equipment will do, and there are some other ways to do it, but Hello. that's that's a plague zombie, and that was it does. That's what it does. Here we go. And With there these you go. samples, I can make something that'll cure blood plague if one of us gets infected. So there you go, guys. That's our first quest done. Thanks. And uh, that's our first video done. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys are intrigued. And uh, I hope you'll join me for the next one. Bye for now.